Radio Berlin International was the international broadcaster for the German Democratic Republic East Germany. History Radio Berlin International RBI started in May 1959 to counter Deutsche Welle, the West German international broadcaster. Much of its output was news reports and information about the GDR. It offered a state-sponsored view on life in a socialist country. It distributed large quantities of colorful and professionally produced publicity material about life in the GDR to its listeners. RBI used transmitters at Leipzig, Königs Wusterhausen, and Nauen. In 1964, RBI's system at Nauen built by the state enterprises VEB Funkwerk Berlin Köpenick and VEB Industrieprojekte featured rotatable tiltable antennas under remote control and able to handle 200 kW of power, making RBI the second most powerful shortwave service in the Soviet bloc. The studios were based in a former furniture factory at Nalipa Strasse in Berlin. The broadcaster ceased operations on 2 October 1990 just before German reunification. The final broadcast was noted for the bitterness among some RBI staff about its takeover rather than unification with Deutsche Welle. The last words for the last English broadcast, at 36 to 48 of the reference, were take care and good luck. Radio Berlin International broadcast in many languages, with many of its announcers at the different services such as English, French, and Danish, coming from their country's respective communist parties. It was one of the major international broadcasters of the Cold War era. <laughs> RBI revival rumors In August 2012, Taiwan-based PCJ Radio reported in its syndicated program Media Network Plus of a publicity campaign for a new station with the name, Radio Berlin International. A website and emails claimed that a group was preparing test transmissions and intended eventually to broadcast programs on technology and education via the Internet and on shortwave from the former RBI's engineering site at Nauen, which had been transferred in 1990 to Deutsche Welle. PCJ producer Keith Perron and a journalist colleague contacted the organization with questions about its programming plans and funding. Both received vague replies. The organization's website disappeared later that month. 